this bad boy right here is my dad's very first skateboarder. Now, it wasn't this exact model. We weren't able to get his skateboard. That wasn't safe. But my wife recently got this. It's like a Bane fiberglass board. It's so rad. I want to get it hanged, put it up in my house somewhere. But I also have a photo of him skating said board right here. Super rad said Delmar Skate Ranch. Today we're gonna go meet up with my dad, get a little session, and kind of talk about skate dads. And I mean the skate coaching dads, the dads that are like sitting there and telling their kids like how to have fun on a skateboard. That's what we're gonna be diving into. So let's uh let's head over to the skate park. I'm definitely gonna get this bad boy framed soon. There'll be another video about that. Let's head over to the park and talk with my dad about the topic of this video. Another extreme weather condition day, meaning it's already 90 degrees and it is 9 a.m. It's crazy. It's supposed to get to 95 today, so it's gonna be brutal. My dad's meeting me up here at Vista Skate Park. I made videos about this place. There's two skate parks in one block. It's really insane. I'll leave a link up above if you wanna see more of this, but let's get inside. My dad's gonna be here soon, so we'll talk more about coaching and skate dadding. And uh, essentially what I wanna talk about with my dad is like how to be a good skate dad without being a bad ski dad. I thought about this topic of like skate coaching or skate dads of like gnarly skate dads because when I was younger I remember this one situation in particular I was at uh, NC Nita's YMCA skate park and uh, there's this dad yelling at his kid to like land this trick and I was like man like that's so crazy I just never seen something like that I thought that was so bizarre because my dad's never done anything like that but he, I think I don't know if you remember this but you're definitely there I just thought it was so funny. I think we did talk about it afterwards, like skate coaching and telling like your, your son what to do. But anyways, I won't name the skater. He did go pro and he's like a well-known skater, but now he's not really skating that much and he's just kind of burnt. And uh, it's just, oh, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, it's almost to no surprise to me because like with that kind of environment, like eventually you're going to be like resentful. Eventually you're going to want to create your own identity. And that's kind of what I want to get at. I think a lot of times like, when you get these like skate coach dads out here like telling the kids what to do they're not able to like find their own identity figure out their own stuff and then they end up being like kind of just in this weird position at one point in life where they have to maybe come to terms with things and figure it out i don't know i guess what i'm getting at is like i think it's a recipe for disaster versus just letting kids or people any age really just like go and enjoy it because if you're forcing somebody to enjoy something chances are they're not actually going to enjoy it i think that's what i'm getting at Sweat overload. Uh, already 94 degrees. We got some homies meeting up, so uh, hopefully they can continue skating because, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna skate like every 30 seconds per like 30 minutes right now. Yeah. 
something that my dad was mentioning too is like how street skating feels less like like there's less like dad coaching and street skating there's more like embracing the culture i noticed like even here at this place it's like the street section over here and it feels less like i've never seen coaches like mom coaches or dad coaches never seen anybody like telling their kids what to do but at the transition park i've actually seen that quite a few times so it's kind of interesting my dad brought that up something to mention is like something with skate parks like the street skating skate parks have less coaching the training skating skate parks have a lot of coaching going on I think this like extreme skateboard parenting thing that I'm talking about, like kind of the skate dads that are really aggressive and like bum me out when I'm on the session, are only gonna get worse. There's gonna be more of them. Um, there's skateboarding in the Olympics, more skateboard competition. There's basically more opportunity within skateboarding now that people see it as a career. And uh, that's just what happens. People now see like, all right, I can get my kid a lot of money if I make him a really good skateboarder. And I think that's a recipe for disaster. So yeah, I just think like, we're gonna see more of these kind of like skate dads, aggro skate parents. And I think this video is just to like, hopefully a parent can watch this or you can show a parent this to just say, hey, like, listen, if you want your kid to enjoy skateboarding forever, you can't make them do certain things. Just there's ways you can help. Like my dad was saying earlier, it's just like provide them an environment that they can enjoy themselves in. Nice and dip. That was, you did it perfect. That was perfect, dude. It's that brotherly support right there. <laughs> make it clear I think having a skate coach or skate dad isn't all a bad thing what I'm trying to get at is like pressuring kids or people to do things that they're not naturally interested in I think that is a recipe for disaster skating with my friends at Vista Park as you see in that session that was really fun my friends were falling I was falling I was willing to take some slams they're willing to take some slams it's kind of like a it's a good thing you get to do it together so now we're gonna go skate another spot but yeah I just wanted to wrap up this video letting you know that 
I think uh, ultimately what I wanted to accomplish in this video is just tell you how to be a good skate parent and that like skate coaching parents I think is a recipe for disaster. Like I can name so many skaters that I saw growing up in California where they had like skate dads and they're like always pressuring them to do all this stuff. And at the end of the day, they didn't end up skating that much longer because they were just like so burnt out on it. So I guess that's what I'm trying to say is like, don't burn out kids on something that like they don't naturally enjoy. I think they have to naturally enjoy it, but then they can really enjoy it. And my dad made a good point. He was like, hey, like if I don't know how to do a Smith grind, I'm gonna be yelling at you and telling you what you need to do to correct your Smith grind. I have seen that go down in action. Like dad's telling kids or mom's telling kids like exactly what they're doing wrong and what they should be doing right. And they don't know how to do it. Now I will say a caveat I said to my dad is like, well, I do think sometimes it's good to have other people like give you a perspective. Even if they can't do the trick, like maybe they can see something you're doing wrong. They can't help. I don't think that's like a, that's like not a realistic thing. I think that is true. People can help even if they don't know how to do the trick. I think the difference is, is like, that's not inspiring for a kid or for anybody is like someone, some dad or something that's not skating telling you how to do it versus like your friend who maybe not know how to do that trick, but like, is down and falling and getting in that grit with you is gonna make a big difference in how you interpret that information.